Hello and welcome to the Oi Let's Talk podcast. I'm Kate. And I'm Gemma. Two friends talking fitness, mindset, business and everything else in between. We really mean everything. Expect banter, education and organised chaos. Your Your new new podcast podcast besties. besties. and welcome back to another episode of the Oi Let's Talk podcast. Today we have a very interesting conversation and I want to pick your brain, Gemma. You are in the spotlight today. I'm stressed. Don't be stressed. It's going to be a good conversation. I want to talk about nutrition. Yep. I want to talk about plant-based. Yep. And I want to talk about something that you're doing or introducing into your diet currently. Awesome. Um, I think that I'm really excited to have this chat because I wanted to have it in a long form way Mm. because it's hard to kind of get some of the journey and topics across that I've been trying to, I've spoken about in person to you, but it's hard to kind of get that across in like a caption or a post. So I think long form is the way to go. But essentially something that I have been navigating and something that I've been wanting to talk about more openly is just essentially how my views, opinions and my own dietary patterns have changed over the years. So just to give you a bit of a background, in primary school I was vegetarian and then after primary school I ate meat again and then in 2015 myself and my um, ex-partner were both strictly plant-based and that really came around because he was wanting to try this diet that he thought would be really good and I love the premise of it. I love the idea of eating less animals, I love the idea of eating more plants and all of that was really good. So I followed that way of eating for a really long time, so from 2015 onwards to today, right? I followed a strictly plant-based diet for the most part Mm. and I had some changing views around this time as well because when I went down this route, a lot of it was just based on the health point of view. We purely changed our way of eating for health. And I loved that aspect of it and I felt really good. From there, it kind of evolved to the word veganism and actually the ethical part of it. I mean, if you're eating less animals, that made me feel happy as well because I'm highly empathetic to that. Mm. And then from there, it kind of the things that I was feeling a bit more conflicted about was when I was in that community, like say I joined like a vegan group and things like that, yeah. it very much felt like there was a clear division, like a, you need to really do it to this really high level or you're not doing good the enough. Extremes. Yeah. Yeah. And it felt like really hard to kind of win. And just some examples that I was thinking about was just feeling bad about, you know, the things that I was wearing and what I've had before, if my car has leather seats, feeling like I'm failing. Like I just was kind of really getting quite anxious about the it. The high pressure? Just a lot. Of, yeah, I just, this is probably part of my personality type. It's probably part of just being empathetic and yeah. also just wanting to do really well. But there was an element there of just feeling like one, a little bit more divisive socially because I was in one world, which was very much like, you have to do this really, really strict. And then if you're not, then you're kind of shit. Mm. You know, if you're not protesting and things like that, then you're shit. And also you've got to change all of these things. Um, You know, if you're having any issues, that's kind of on you. There was that kind of opinion. And then there's the other, which was just, if I don't have that title and if I don't focus on that, then I can kind of live a little bit more freely and do what's right for me. So just kind of giving you a bit of a journey there of like what conflicting kind of, things I was going through. Um, But for the most part, again, I came into this for health and I was feeling really good. So I was, in my opinion, for no reason really to change. And I still believe that most people would benefit from eating more plants. That's still based on dietary guidelines. But Mm. what's changed with me is I did feel like I got wrapped up a bit along the way being like, this is the best way. And through working with so many women and so many clients and also just having so much exposure to people in the health and fitness industry, I truly believe that there is no one diet for everybody. I think that there's some guiding principles, eating, you know, a good amount of protein in your diet, having a good diversity in your diet. But the thing that I struggled with and why I've come to the opinion I do today is I think that if you blanketly tell someone that you have to eat this way really strictly for moral and ethical reasons, even if it's not necessarily suited to you, I struggle with accepting that point of view because from, again, working with people, if someone has 
a gluten intolerance and they have gut issues and then you're saying they have to eat this way that's already going to be excluding certain things, I think that's going to make it really hard for them socially and I think that it's going to just make it hard in terms of enjoyment and availability of what they can eat. Yeah. So that is one of the reasons why my kind of... I stepped back from that and also was just navigating thinking about this like if I work with a client and they tell me that they want to eat better I don't want them to think that they have to just eat one way because yeah. I eat a certain way so that also shifted how I wanted to present myself online mm. now coming to today and even the evolution from there so again following a very strictly plant-based diet I've gone through trying to gain weight during different phases I've gone through um, cutting through bodybuilding competition and all of that there was some reoccurring themes of things that I was working through. So if I eat a lot of like lentils and legumes, I'd have some gut issues. Yeah. If I eat certain things, it was just struggling with the amount of fiber I'd have. So then I would just have say a mock meat or something like that. But then I would also struggle with the opinion that is that necessarily better for me from a health focused lens? Yeah. And then my point of view was I, I don't think that it is. Yeah. Then during lockdown, I, I got a hair tissue mineral analysis. Oh. I've actually since heard that this isn't a very reliable yeah. testing method, but I was still interested to know. And a, and a couple of blood tests and everything was pretty good, but I did come back with having low chlorine. Oh. I've said that wrong. Chlorine? Chlorine? C-H-O-L-I-N-E. It's the highest in eggs. I've forgotten how to say the word. Can you look at the word? Let's uh, Google translate. <laughs> it's chlorine definitely Chlorine in eggs. Yeah. It's not chlorine, that's in a pool. I know, I've said it the wrong way. Oh, yeah, okay, hold How on. How do I say that? How to say, do you reckon the mic will pick this up? Oh. I don't know, but it, guys, for anyone listening at home, it's C-H-O-L-I-N-E, coline, coline, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's, it. yeah. Whatever, Google it. Anyway. <laughs> We're not Google. <laughs> what I was getting at was I'm always so proactive with blood tests. I think just I have a type A personality. I'm always just like, yeah. do it well, do it right. Let's get on top of it. Do it to the best of its ability. And I came back having low um, yep. on some levels. And I was like, cool, what's the highest of that um, nutrient? And it was already a lot of veggies that I was already eating. Mm. And the other highest thing was eggs. Yeah. So then I was navigating, do I reintroduce eggs back into my diet? What's the best thing to do? And I felt quite a lot of guilt with doing that, especially because I had eaten so strictly for so many years. So I was kind of struggling with that as well. But then I just decided that it's what was best for me and what was going to avoid me having to supplement another thing. Yeah. So that was why I decided to reintroduce eggs back into my diet. So that's kind of the evolution of a little bit more flexibility. Now, in recent times, I've... I was trying to get the guy, to the little it. Google guy to be like, blue, blue, that's and fine. say it, but it, I can't find it. That's so. fine. Um, and then in recent times, so again, I've gone from really strict diet, kind of going down the rabbit hole of being around and surrounded by groups and things that are veganism, kind of being conflicted as a health-focused coach, personal mm. trainer, not wanting to project a bias onto my clients and just wanting people to eat better overall. Yeah. So changing how I've kind of presented myself online and just being like, I'll do what I want to do, you do what you want to do, as long as we're eating in a health-focused way. Then more recently, um, bringing eggs back into my diet. And then even more recently, so again, I take uh, do blood tests all the time. The thing that I've wanted to bump up recently has been my omega-3 status. Yeah because I was having a bit of brain fog. It is hard to tell if, is it brain fog because we've got a lot of things on, what is it? Yeah. So then I was supplementing for omega-3s, but I was getting really bad acid reflux. Oh, yeah. And I was like, this is shit. So again, I was like, I'm just going to reintroduce fish into my diet. Now, this was a really big thing for me, again, because I, I know probably nobody cares, right? Yeah. It's probably all a in my head thing, but I just felt a level of, guilt I yeah. felt just like I've shed an ident identity of myself and yeah. I just felt quite um anxious about doing that but the thing that I remembered is what advice would I give a friend literally what advice would I give a client I would tell them to do what is best for them and then when I thought about it more broadly like that I thought that if I do this and I take away that pressure of having to do something super super strict I'll actually allow myself more freedom in a social setting, I'll allow myself more freedom when we travel because 
again, looking at it through a health centric lens, if I go on holiday and we go somewhere remote and the only option I have that say plant based strictly is a salad or veggies and I'm trying to eat a high amount of protein, is that really sustainable or, yeah, or even optimal even? Optimal. Yeah. And that's kind of what I came back to. So the overarching theme was there's actually nothing wrong with mm. how I was eating for a, a, you know, omitting animal products from my diet. I could survive eating that way and that was fine. But the thing that always guides everything I do and just the way that I want to live is, am I thriving? Yeah. And from going through that journey, I think that allowing more freedom in my diet, being less um, harsh on myself of wanting to, wanting to try different things mm -hmm. and just releasing the reins a bit, I think is better for me socially. It'll give me more options and it will also allow me to um, not just struggle with say some digestive things, IBS things and having yeah. to supplement something and kind of struggling with the, the repercussions of that. So yeah. a bit I of a think, journey. I think maturing yeah. is realising that you can eat whatever you want yeah. as long as you're eating optimally for, for you. Yeah, right? exactly. And this doesn't concern anyone else. And the reason I say this is I was a vegetarian for nearly eight years, Yeah, right? At the time, all of my friends were either vegetarians or vegans. Yeah. And I remember when I started getting sick. So I went to the doctor, really low iron, started taking iron supplements, had low iron stores as well, constipated. That's right. going to be a fucking meme, isn't it? <laughs> Constipated from Constantly. iron tablets, right? Yeah. They're not the best on your gut. And yeah. I really struggled with that. And then I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go back. And I started with what you're doing. Fi Actually, it was fish first. I yeah. wasn't really, I had, was in the egg ick era, you know? Yeah, had an that. egg ick. So I was on my fish grind. And then I started eating chicken. And red meat for me was like a no-go. Like yeah. I just couldn't. And I wasn't really a big red meat eater. And then I started eating red meat, obviously yeah. high source of iron. And then now I'm a full meat eater or whatever. Yeah. But I remember feeling those senses of guilt. Yeah. That deep, like, oh my God, if I go out for dinner and I'm with my friends who are vegan and vegetarian, are they going to look at me like I'm the devil because I've decided to go back on my word or something that I was preaching so heavily about before. Yeah. But also like you evolve as yeah. an evolution as a human. You can have one opinion today and then a different opinion tomorrow. Yeah. And that's all about being a human. I also want to circle back to the maturing also is realising that when you coach people, you just come from a neutral state. Yeah. And this, I'm not saying you're doing this, but yeah. I think it's really important to like, cool, if you are a vegan or if you are majority plant-based or you are doing the carnivore diet, if you're coaching people, you're not coaching them into that box. No. You're coaching them from an optimal health perspective based on them, not on your views. Something that I I know that I am proud of as well as whoever I ha have coached over the years. Oh, I've never always be like been, that. No, but I, I have always been meet them where they're at. Yeah. I've never told them that they have to eat a certain way. No. I've always, if they've come to me, they're like, oh, I want to try some veggie recipes, I'm your girl. But... I think that has been an important aspect of this is I coach people and I just want them to feel good. So I'm not going to tell them that they have to do something if they are struggling with doing it for food accessibility issues, social issues, whatever it is. Mm. And because of that, that's also influenced how I want to present myself because I don't want to be stuck. And I did feel there was a time there where I was becoming more judgmental of myself and of others and it's not really me but I felt it happening and yeah. I was like this isn't it no. and I want to feel more free with everything that I do going out for dinner with me stop it <laughs> look at I, you excited. I actually messaged Jem the other day so I love Japanese food and she was like oh I want to talk about this episode on the podcast I was like yeah I fucking love this episode and I was like does this mean we can go out for sashimi together and she was like I'm undecided yet. Like, <laughs> let me breathe for a fucking second. I've really just made this decision. I'm like, I can't wait. This yeah. is the best day of my life. <laughs> well, the other thing, just to add a layer of this. So my partner, fiance, Ben, he is vegetarian. So something that I was conscious of was that I want to still support him yeah. when we eat out. I don't want it to ever be that he's like the only person getting stuck with a certain thing. I'm just going to eat whatever he eats. But for my own diet and whenever I can make a choice, I'm going to choose things. And the, my main thing is just going to be... I have another protein source. I have another right. option and omega-3s and brain fog and just wanting to not have to supplement another thing. And also it's no one's fucking business. Yeah, but that's something that I did so, struggle with yeah, because I know that people are very judgmental and 
I also know that people would have, if you've followed me for a long time, I would have been posting about eating my vego, you know, vego recipes. And yeah. although this has evolved, I've pulled back from speaking about it because I've been navigating it. Mm. But now I just feel like... Fuck it. Fuck it. But I just yeah. feel like I, I mean, again, what advice would I give a friend? Absolutely. What advice would I give you? And Yeah, absolutely. And I think as well, like it's no one else's business what you decide to do. Oh, obviously, like I love this conversation. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like... If you want to eat fish today and then tomorrow you decide fuck that or you want to yeah. climb Mount Everest and then you get halfway up and you think airlift me out of this I'm off this bitch like it's your decision you just try and stuff yeah you just try and stuff and also guys we need to remember this is our first time living this is okay? our first time experiencing this so we're just gonna try shit and then we're gonna see what we like and then tomorrow we might hate it and it's all good and that's the exact experience I had like I loved it and I still will continue to eat mostly this way but I just want a little bit more freedom and yep. flexibility. And I think that that will be what's best for me. Yeah. And honoring that. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that conversation. And I feel like there's going to be so many people who potentially are in the same boat or relate or feel like, oh my God, I'm wanting to make a diet change, but I'm feeling really guilty because I was in one camp and now I'm wanting to move across. So they're going to get a lot from this episode. Another reason that I wanted to speak about this is it just felt like the right timing. Again, I've thought about this. I've tried food recently. I've tried food before, but now I'm like, yes, I'm 100% going to continue doing this. That's why I'm ready to talk about it. But I had another client of mine who was struggling with something similar and I literally had the same conversation with her. I was like, why don't you just... Like, let go of the pressure and yeah. do whatever you want to do. And Absolutely. then she's like, yeah. And then I think that she was expecting some sort of like, oh, no, don't do that. You're not trying hard enough. And I was like, no. Yeah. And I was like, this is the right time. It's also like being a personal trainer. Like, yeah. we could put it in the same box. as like, we're personal trainers. So yeah. we need to be, quote, unquote, healthy all the time. So we can't drink. We can't eat bad food. McDonald's burgers out the fucking window because you're a personal trainer. Yeah. So when you become a PT, I don't feel like this anymore. Yeah. I live my life the way I want to. But when I first became a PT or even when I was studying nutrition, I had the same thing. I was like, oh my God, if somebody sees me eating chips, like yep. shit, I'm yeah. like not a personal trainer. Yeah. Or I'm not quote unquote healthy enough to be a personal trainer and coach other people. It'd be the same feeling that you're feeling of like, I have to be this extreme level or I'm quote unquote failing. I think the thing that was more so was just shedding an identity because yeah. that was part of my identity. Like I ate that way. I advocated for, you know, eating more plants. I never said you have to do this, but I was always just like, this is great. This is what's working for me. So it was kind of just like shedding and evolving with that and just feeling the feels of just being like, it's actually okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Probably building it up in my head. Absolutely. Get less in your head, more, more in out. your life, doll. Um, I absolutely love that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't forget to rate this podcast five stars if you enjoyed it. Share it with your bestie and see you next week. Love you. Bye. Love you, bye.